readers, it's Lori. Welcome back. And today I want to talk about what I read in the month of August. Now it is just at the end of August. And at one point I thought I would maybe finish another book before the end of the month. So I put off filming this video till the day before we go on vacation. But um, yeah, it's not going to happen. So I'm just going to go with what I got. And if something is read on my way to where we're going or finished on the way to where I'm going, then that's great. But for now, I have the list of what I read in August and it was a good reading month, I would say. I enjoyed most of the books I read, and one of them was one of my five-star predictions, so I'm not going to rate that for you, but I did complete one of those. Um, I did complete a couple of summer reads on my summer reading list, and um, there was one I surprisingly didn't like. So let's get started. Okay, the first book I finished in the month of August was The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. And I got this from the library right before my mini weekend trip uh, at the first of the month. And I loved A Head Full of Ghosts. So I anticipated that I was going to love The Cabin at the End of the World. And I didn't really. I kind of so I have mixed feelings about it, and I still haven't rated it on Goodreads because I'm just not sure. Weeks later, I'm just not sure how I feel about this book. So the story was an inter it was an interesting plot. The plot is that a young girl is out playing at a cabin with her dads for a summer, I guess, or for a period of time in the summer, and she's out playing and looking, chasing fireflies, and a man comes up and starts to talk to her, which makes her uncomfortable. And then he tells her that he that bad things are going to happen and that it's not her fault and that he has to save the world. And then some other people come up and the plot goes on from there. It starts out pretty fast. It doesn't uh, move. It moves a little slowly, but I guess not tremendously slowly. And my problem was, is that while I finished it in a couple of days, I just didn't, I just didn't feel a whole lot of fear or it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. And in the end, the way that it ended was just not at all what I was hoping for. I don't know that I was hoping for anything, but it was just not a good ending in my opinion. The characters were fairly well developed. I liked the little girl, the character of the little girl. Um, it was just a weird, weird premise. So I guess it would be classified as apocalyptic horror, but it wasn't really horrifying. I mean, okay, so it's graphically violent at times, but it wasn't really horrifying to me. And I, um, yeah, I guess if I had to, give it a rating, I would probably go with two and a half stars. It, it just really disappointed me. <laughs> and I've heard some people aren't loving growing things, which is a short story collection. And I was going to put that on my list, but now I don't know. But again, I loved A Head Full of Ghosts. I do recommend that one. It's one of my favorites in the last few years that I've read, but this was just not one of them. So the next book I read is actually a children's book. And to be fair, it was read to me. I was traveling with my daughter and we went to a bookstore, children's bookstore, and she's a second grade teacher. And she said, oh my gosh, have you ever read this book by Mo Willems? And I said, no, I had not. And so she pulled Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs from the shelf and prepared to began to read it to me in her teacher reading voice, which is fantastic. She's a great reader. I can't imagine how compelled her kids are when she reads to them. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs is hysterically funny. The illustrations are amazing. Mo Willems is one of my favorite children's writers, and I gave Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs five stars. So if you have a little one, or if you just like children's books, I really recommend this. It's a great, great story. It's a retelling of Goldilocks, but in a tremendously neat way. 
And yes, I'm shamelessly counting that, but not because I want an extra book to have read, but because I want people to know about it and see it on Goodreads and know how much I loved it. Then I started this Nora Roberts Witches trilogy that I acquired uh, partially at a little free library, and then I got a couple of them on Book Depository, I think, or uh, I don't know. Yeah, Book Depository, maybe. Um, so the first one is Dance Upon the Air, and this is the Island, no, the Three Sisters Island trilogy. Uh, it's a witchy romance. Book number one was my favorite so far. Um, it's a, you know, it's a Nora Roberts trilogy. It's fairly predictable. Uh, girl shows up, meets guy, passions start to flare, resistance happens, other things happen, you know, just the typical stuff. So I gave this one four stars. I really did like this one. And then I read the second one in the series, which is Heaven and Earth. It's hard to see that one. I didn't love this one at all. Um, it was actually, for a moment, I wasn't sure I was gonna finish it, except that I just was committed to um, reading these. And so, I, I mean, it was, you know, it was just okay. I mean, I gave it three stars, but it was just, I didn't like the, I liked the guy in the second one, but I don't like this girl. So there's always three girls and three guys. I don't like this girl. I can't seem to like her even in the third one. I'm reading the third one now. And again, I might finish it by the end of the month because I'm taking it with me on the trip, but I don't like her. So I like the other girl um, and the guy. So, you know, but I, so I liked all the guys and two of the girls and it, it was okay. You know, three stars. I, I'm, I finished it. <laughs> Then I listened to The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros, and I thought the audiobook was well, well done. She reads it herself. So this is a short little book, and it was recommended by Books and Lala, I think, as a, it would have been a reading rush challenge, but I didn't pick it up at that time because I didn't need whatever category that was. But... I put it on my list and they had it on script. So I listened to it and it is delightful. It's part poetic, part short essay. Uh, no, I wouldn't even call it an essay. Short um, autobiographical essay, I guess. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful story about the coming of age of a, a Latina child in the neighborhood in which they live and the people that she knows in the neighborhood and her other family members and the way she navigates friendships and challenges and fearful things and how beautifully this story is written and read is hard for me to convey but it, if you're looking for a short lovely diverse read that's lyrical and beautiful and and just really puts you in touch and in mind with your childhood experiences and the childhood experiences of children who and you know for me it was like I don't know what it would be like to grow up as a Latina child in a neighborhood I don't know how it would feel to move frequently I don't know I mean, some of the things that happened to her, I can definitely relate to, but it's also an extra layer of family and community that, you know, that not everybody has. And I'm grateful that I had it and I had a neighborhood community too, and I had a great family, but it was just lovely and I highly recommend it. Then I finally got on the top of the list for Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is also a five-star prediction for me. And it had been on my wait list for a while. It took me a bit of time to get it. Then, of course, after I got the physical copy, the ebook popped in too. So that was nice. And I found it on script. So I did a combination of reading hardback and listening to it and reading the ebook. And I cannot tell you what I rated it because it is one of my five-star predictions, but it is a nice mystery with flashbacks from the beginning. Um, well, I mean, not the beginning of, but from the life of this 
girl who's called the Marsh Girl and how she is sort of abandoned by uh, her family and left to fend for herself and how she does do that is incredible and well written, well told. And then it flashes forward to a murder. A uh, body is discovered on the, in the water off the marsh and the investigation of that murder begins. And so it's a coming together of the past and present. It is a delightful story about the resiliency of children and the, the support in communities for children who are not cared for well. It, uh, I thought it was very well done and I'll give you my final star rating when I do the wrap up on the five star predictions, but I do recommend it. And then on my nonprofit stack, I finished Wait Till Next Year by Doris Kearns Goodwin. I think I talked about this a lot in several videos because it's my nonprofit stack read. It's also my summer read because it's about baseball. And I really did enjoy this. This is a memoir, which for Doris Kearns Goodwin is not her normal, um, what she normally writes about. She writes more about history and um, a lot of presidents and different. Um, aspects of historical um, nonfiction. I couldn't get it out, but this one is about growing up in Brooklyn and rooting for the Dodgers and what it's like to grow up in the 40s and 50s as a young person. Really well told. I listened to part of this as well as read the book and I am a big baseball fan, baseball fan so I really liked it. I don't know if you would like it as much if you're not a baseball fan because it is a, it's a very heavy read about baseball, but it's also about her parents, her relationship with her parents, living with a mom who had some health problems, childhood, community. There's a big theme going on here, right? What a great summer experience I've had to read these books about neighborhoods and childhoods and growing up and coming of age and, and all the things that all of these books entail. So I liked it a lot and I, it was very well written. I gave it four stars. So, so far uh, here at the very end of August, there's just a couple of days left in the month. This is what I have been able to read this month. So uh, that actually the way it is, is seven books and I may indeed finish an eight. I didn't even mention earlier, that I had to come back and insert this. So I read 1,894 pages, six fiction, one nonfiction novel, so that um that was a great i'm i'm happy with this month's read i really am this was a great reading month i hope you had a great reading month in august and if you've read some of these books let me know what you think or if you decide to put them on your stack let me know that too i love summer reading and i have also found other recommendations for summer reading, but I'm not sure I can get to those yet, but I'm always excited to see what other people are taking a look at and what they consider to be a great summer read. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to be a subscriber and to connect with me frequently on this channel. If you'd like to subscribe, just hit the subscribe button and then also click the bell at the top of the page so you get a notification every time a new video is posted. I've done really well filming and editing and posting and scheduling this last week, so um, I'm anticipating that everything will go smoothly, then I'll come back and do a few more before I leave again. What a lovely time for me, traveling, all these trips, trips to look forward to. You just can't imagine the places that I will go in the next few months. So stay tuned, stay with me, subscribe, tell me about your trips and travels, and as always, happy, happy reading day. Bye.